This is the new fifth generation Range Rover. And look, it's actually got some mud on it. We've taken it off road. We haven't just parked it in central London. And in this review, we're gonna tell you everything that you need to know about this car. And there's loads to discuss because there's new engines, there's new tech, there's a slightly new look, but what does it all add up to? Does this live up to the Range Rover name? And is it a brilliant luxury SUV? That's what we're gonna find out. But first, if you wanna see lots more new car reviews like this, then subscribe to our channel. And if you're after a great deal on your next car, then click on the link up there, look in our description below and go to whatcar.com. So first, what's new compared to the old Range Rover? Well, underneath, things are very, very different, but up top, it does look fairly similar, doesn't it? So there's a few tweaks here and there, but it retains that kind of overall Range Rover presence and Range Rover look. Now at the front, you do have a redesigned grille. The headlights are a bit different as well. And actually each headlight cluster now contains apparently 1.2 million mirrors. The side of the car also has a slightly sleeker look than before because you've now got these flush door handles, which we first saw in the Range Rover Velar. And now you can also on the new Range Rover get up to a massive 23 inch alloys, although these are only 22 inches on this test car that we've got here. You can also get the Range Rover in short or long wheelbase forms. And both of those versions are even bigger than the equivalent versions from the old car. And look, we have here a long wheelbase Range Rover. Now first, let's look at the back of the car. This is the same whether you go for long or short wheelbase versions of the car, but you have this slightly different look from before. So the front's very similar, at the back it does look a bit different because you've got these really slim vertical taillights. Just like before, you still have a split tailgate in the Range Rover, but now they put a bit more focus on enjoying this split rear tailgate at the back here. So for example, you now have this movable part of the boot floor which you can pop up here to give you a bit of extra underfloor storage but it's double hinged so you can also lift it up to give you a sort of a backrest back here so you can sit back and enjoy the great outdoors you can also add some cup holders in the back you can get some event seating which basically gives you two flip out chairs that sit on the tailgate back here and of course this doubles up as being a helpful barrier to stop all your luggage flying around in the back of the car as well. But the big difference to point out in the back of this new Range Rover are these two rear seats that you can see here. Because if you go for the long wheelbase version of the car, then as an optional extra, you can choose to have a seven seat version of the Range Rover for the first time. So what are those new rear seats like? Well, to get back there, you can very simply fold forward this middle row electrically. It takes eight seconds to do so, apparently. And then you can see it gives you this really pretty big space to climb inside and get into these back seats here. When you're here, you've got some more buttons to put that seat back in its place. All very handy, all pretty relaxing. And okay, I can't sit up dead straight and feel like I have loads of headroom above me, but considering that this is the third row of a car, the space is pretty good really. Kids will be absolutely fine and even adults would be able to put up with this for pretty long journeys. There's very few cars that offer truly incredibly spacious third row seating but the Range Rover is pretty good. Now we're back in the standard wheelbase version of the Range Rover in this middle row to show you that even if you go for the smaller of the two options that you can have in the Range Rover there's loads of room back here. So legroom is incredibly generous and it's lovely having these carpeted floors as well that feel even with shoes on you can feel how soft they are headroom is very very good as well even with a sunroof fitted it all just feels very open and calm and spacious and these seats really are very very plush very padded and supportive there's more luxuries back here as well because you can adjust the angle of the backrest electrically although the way it operates is rather abrupt in its action. It's not particularly smooth and slow, but still nice that you can have it. You can also put a blind up so that you don't have to look at the poor people outside. And if you want to up the luxury even further back here, then you can get some screens on the back of the front seats. You can also, instead of this five seat layout, you can get a four seat layout, which effectively gives you two armchairs in this middle row. And you can also, on range topping SV models, swap this middle seat for a champagne fridge. 
Now it's all very well having loads of space in the back and being very practical, but this is a new Range Rover. It's a luxury SUV. It's up against other amazingly impressive cars like a BMW X7, the Bentley Bentayga. It really has to deliver a knockout interior up front and it looks like it does. The materials feel really high quality with these leathers here and you can go for a vegan interior which actually costs more to have than the leather interior. And it all feels amazingly high quality with this wood down here on the center console. The metal trim does feel a little bit plasticky, especially around the steering wheel here, which is a bit of a shame, but you still have these really nice actual metal paddle gear shifters on the steering wheel as well. So overall, this is really high quality. It's all put together very nicely, feels really sturdy. It is very impressive compared to anything else in the class. And there's a lot of tech in here as well. So you get a digital driver display as standard, you get a head up display, and you also have this 13.1 inch touchscreen infotainment system down here. Now this is the biggest screen fitted to a Jaguar Land Rover product. And we've seen that they have made huge steps forwards in their infotainment over the last few years. And that continues with this here. So it's very similar to what you get in the new F-Pace. The screen's just a bit bigger. So that means it's bright, it's responsive, it's got a really attractive layout. It is slightly complicated. There's a lot of menus and sub menus. And of course, we would always prefer an infotainment system that's got more physical controls so that it's easier to use while you're driving. So for that reason, the BMW X7 with its iDrive infotainment system that has a rotary dial controller on the center console, that still has an advantage over this, but this is still very good. You also get Amazon Alexa built in a standard along with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But the other thing to point out up front is that the driving position is pretty much perfect for this kind of car. So even with the seat in its lowest position, you have an amazing view out the front of the car. I can see all the way down to the nose and you have big door mirrors. You've got a brilliant view out the back with loads of glass. It just helps make it feel a lot smaller and a lot more manageable than it actually is because this, of course, is a massive car. And the seats themselves are so comfortable. The leather is really thick. There's so much support and there's so much adjustment and everything as well. So you will, without a doubt, no matter your shape or size, be able to find a perfect driving position very, very easily in this car. And there's a lot of storage up front as well. So on this center console here, You've got wireless phone charging neatly hidden under this with a storage compartment. You've also got some cup holders. You can even push those cup holders back to give you another storage compartment there. And then in this massive armrest here, you have this huge cubby hole that goes to the center of the earth down there. And you also on the dashboard have two glove boxes, one on the top and one on the bottom. There's door bins as well. They're not actually that big, but they're still big enough for a water bottle or whatever else you might need to put there. So with all the space, the luxury, the tech, this really is a fantastic interior. Now of all the new tech and the new features in the Range Rover, perhaps the most game-changing one enables the rear wheels to turn by up to seven degrees. So what that does at high speeds is give you some extra stability, especially when you're changing lanes on the motorway. But the reason it's such a benefit is because at low speeds, it reduces the turning circle of the car. Now in the old Range Rover, the turning circle was more than 12 meters, but now with the new car, it's less than 11 meters, which is about the turning circle of a VW Golf. So this is a massive car, no doubt. Anything that you have to make it feel a little bit less massive and easier to maneuver is a very welcome addition. And let's face it, lots of these cars are gonna be driven in tight, urban towns with not much room and pretty small parking spaces. So the fact that you have that as standard is brilliant because it does mean that this is the most maneuverable Range Rover yet. You can also get some active noise cancelling tech with the new Range Rover. So if you go for that, it's a fairly expensive optional extra. It's four and a half thousand pounds, but it gets you an upgraded sound system as well. And it puts microphones on the wheels outside which pick up the noise coming into the car. And then there are some speakers inside the car as well that transmit a frequency to try and cancel out that exterior noise. And apparently the new car lets 24% less noise into the interior than the old car. Now we haven't driven a car without this noise cancelling technology fitted, so I can't say that it makes a completely enormous difference compared to a car that doesn't have it. 
But what we can say is the refinement levels in the new Range Rover are exceptional. It's also really comfortable. You get adaptive air suspension as standard. It gives you various different ride heights you can select. It also gets a 48 volt anti-roll bar system as well. So when you do go around a corner, it stays remarkably flat considering this is a really tall, really heavy, really big SUV. And it's pretty good to drive. The steering feels a bit more precise and accurate than it did before, but it's still really smooth and light. So again, just to stress, this is such an easy car to drive and it's such an easy car to drive smoothly as well. Because you've got that really light steering, you've got that really impressively tight turning circle, because the ride's really nice and isolates you from the worst of the bumps on the road, and also even the brake pedal weighting is very consistent and very smooth, so it's really effortless to stop smoothly as well. Whatever your preference of power is, the Range Rover has an engine option for you. Our test car was the D350 diesel, which was very smooth and punchy, and there's a cheaper D300 below that. And even that slowest version of the Range Rover will still manage 0 to 60 miles per hour in a brisk 6.5 seconds. If you're after a petrol, then there's a 396 brake horsepower P400 and a rapid 523 brake horsepower P530, which gets a BMW sourced 4.4 litre V8. So just like the old car really, the new Range Rover is comfortable, quiet, decent to drive and has a good choice of engines. But where the new car really stands out is with its plug-in hybrids. The P440e and P510e pair a 3.0-litre six-cylinder petrol engine with a 38kWh battery and an electric motor. Sure, they're quick, but the real headline news is that they have claimed electric ranges of up to 70 miles. We haven't driven those versions yet, but the few rival plug-in SUVs this would be up against won't travel anywhere near as far on pure electric power. So the plug-in Range Rovers could be game-changing for the class. And by the way, a fully electric version is due in 2024. So there's loads of great things about this car on the road, but being a Range Rover, it has to be amazing off-road as well. And the good news is this new model definitely is. So for a start, you've got a really high ground clearance. It's 295 millimeters, and you can get an additional 145 millimeters in the highest of the four suspension settings that you have for the car. It's also got a really good approach and departure angle. So that means if you're going up a steep hill or if you're going down a steep hill, you've got a good chance of not scraping the front or the back of the car. And on top of all that, it can wade through water that's up to 900 millimeters deep. Now we've already said that the visibility is brilliant in this car, but it's even better off-road because you've got these off-road cameras down here, which mean that if you're going up a blind crest and you can't see anything, you can look down here and it gives you a brilliant view of what's beneath you. And it also gives you side views of the alloys as well. So you can see if you're about to crack your alloy on a massive rock that you can't see on the side or if there's a tree root sticking out as well. So sure, most people who buy a Range Rover are more likely to be doing the school run or collecting parking fines in Chelsea, but you can buy this new car safe in the knowledge that it is, just like its predecessors, incredible off-road. Now there is an elephant in the room with the Range Rover, and that is this car's reliability record. So all previous versions of the Range Rover have not had the best reliability record, shall we say. Jaguar Land Rover's talking a lot about wanting to improve its reliability in its products. Of course, the new Range Rover is far too new to damn it straight away, but there really has to be a seismic change at the company in order for their products to become significantly more reliable than they used to be. The new Range Rover gets a three-year unlimited mileage warranty. So let's hope that the reliability issues that have plagued all previous models begin to get better with this new one. What we can say is that the test car that we have seems to have blown a rear speaker in the back. So I'm not sure if you can hear it or if you've been able to hear it for the whole review in the car. But after being fine for the entire day, when we just got in the car now, the rear speaker behind me is just emitting some white noise. And I've turned the sound down, I've turned the infotainment system off, I've got out the car, locked it, turned everything off, I've come back in again, and it's still making that noise. Let's just hope this is just an early test car and no other Range Rover will have any reliability issues whatsoever. 
And frankly, if you've spent at least £100,000 on something, you'd hope it would work, wouldn't you? In the UK, an entry-level Range Rover is priced way above an X7 and an Audi Q7. And with prices going up beyond £170,000, a big chunk of the lineup is in Bentley Bentayga territory. In fact, the only rival that makes the Range Rover look like a bargain is the Rolls-Royce Cullinan. But you do get a lot of kit for your money. Even entry-level SE trim still gets a really plush interior and plenty of tech, like adaptive cruise control with steering assistance. So, if you're looking for a completely revolutionary Range Rover experience, then you might have to wait until we drive the pure electric version of this car or the plug-in hybrid. But what we can say about this diesel is that everything that was great about the old Range Rover is present and correct in the new one with a few improvements here and there and some new technology as well to make the whole package even better. So it's very expensive, but it is very, very good. This is an excellent luxury SUV. If you want even more information on the car, click on the link to go to whatcar.com where you can read our extended written review of the Range Rover and every other new and used car around. And on our website, don't forget, you can also get a great deal on your next car.